Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the first U.S.-built A321 is set for delivery, Embry-Riddle's Wings and Ways Air Show is canceled, a jetpack pilot is injured. I'm Brie Cross, it's April 13th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. According to Airbus, the first U.S.-built Airbus A321 airplane will be delivered later this month to JetBlue. This airplane is the first to be assembled at the Airbus Mobile, Alabama plant that opened last year. The European plane maker spent about $600 million to build the plant on 53 acres near Mobile and its plan to produce up to 50 A320 family airplanes per year. The JetBlue A321 flew its first test flight from Mobile on March 21st. Several Airbus executives, including Chief Operating Officer Customers John Lee and Airbus Vice President and General Manager for U.S. Manufacturing Daryl Taylor, will be on hand for the delivery ceremony. They will be joined by JetBlue President and CEO Robin Hayes, according to a report from Air Transport World. A second A321, this one for American Airlines, was rolled off the assembly line on April 4th. Another major air event has been canceled due to lack of economic support. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and show producer David Schultz Air Shows have announced that the 2016 Wings and Ways Air Show scheduled for October 8th and 9th this year over Daytona Beach will not take place. Embry-Riddle's Bill Hampton said, quote, Unfortunately, a lack of external sponsorship and ongoing logistical concerns prevent the university from hosting Wings and Ways this year. It's reported the university will continue with plans to celebrate its 90 years of leadership in the aerospace industry with on-campus events including the annual Industry Career Expo, alumni homecoming activities, and a campus-wide celebration for alumni, students, faculty, and staff. Embry-Riddle says they will consider future iterations of the Wings and Waves show, provided that adequate sponsors and partners are on board. After the break, when you strap a jetpack to your back, a helmet might be a good idea. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. An executive with Jetpack International was injured during a test flight accident last week in Denver, Colorado. It's reported that company vice president Nick McOmer was conducting a test flight when he lost control of the device and fell about 20 feet. McOmer was flying the hydrogen peroxide fuel Jetpack on property belonging to a Denver energy drink company that sponsors Jetpack International's promotional efforts. McOmer was taken to a hospital for treatment and was released the following day, according to television station KDVR. He said in a telephone interview that he had landed on his head and had broken his jaw. Other injuries required 27 stitches, and he suffered burns on his arms and legs. McAmer was not wearing a helmet. Company president Troy Widgery reportedly said that while he should have been wearing one, quote, he's so good, and again, this was just a test flight. It's reported the FAA was called to investigate the accident. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Welcome to the 2016 Sun and Fun Innovation Preview, an extension of nearly a decade special event coverage of the most innovative and disruptive new products and companies in the aviation universe. This video program became a classic only one week ago. A&M provided the jumpstart for Sun and Fun 2016 with our Sun and Fun Innovation Preview Program. If you haven't seen it yet, it's still there to give you insight into the innovation in our Aeroverse. Just go to our website and click the link provided on the page header. After these messages, the B-52 Stratofortress is deployed again. 
Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The venerable B-52 Strato Fortress is in combat again. The B-52 bombers from Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana arrived in Qatar on April 9th. They are supporting theater requirements of Operation Inherent Resolve in fighting ISIS forces in the region. The FAA reauthorization bill continues to get fatter. Last week, the Senate voted to bolster airport security for passengers by adding an amendment to pending Senate legislation. The amendment deals with airport perimeter security and improved vetting of airport employees. Pan Am International Flight Academy and parent company ANA Holdings have announced a change in leadership. Mr. Teshi Nageshi has been named president and CEO and will leave from Pan Am's world headquarters in Miami, Florida. On April 16th, the USS Hornet Museum will commemorate the 74th anniversary of World War II's Doolittle Tokyo Air Raid. World War II veteran and former CV-8 crew member Richard Nowatsky, who was an eyewitness to the launch of the raid, will share his memories. Cobham Avcom has announced that the distance measuring equipment test option for the recently released ATC 5000 NG Next Gen Transponder Test Set is now ready for delivery on new test set orders. Field units can be upgraded to include the new DME option. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Iranian media is reporting that Boeing has been given permission by the U.S. government to talk directly with Iranian airlines. According to a USA Today report, the semi-official FARS news agency quoted Ali Abizaba, head of Iran's civil aviation organization, as saying that, quote, Boeing intends to launch its talks with Iranian companies with permission from the U.S. government. He added that the plane maker has already provided one Iranian airline with some information to upgrade flight safety. The official Iranian news agency, IRNA, said in a report last Friday that Boeing officials are planning a visit to Iran to look at possible cooperation with several airlines, including the national carrier Iran Air. However, Boeing officials reportedly stress that the trip is not intended to be a sales call. Iran Air has already inked an agreement to purchase 118 airplanes from Airbus and 20 from ATR, according to the report. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.